Okay, so here we are once again, ready to get started. Now, um, I just had to tell you guys that it is very possible, very, very possible that tonight I will have to be with my camera off because if not, uh, I might be lagging a lot as I have been having issues with my, um, with my internet because, um, you know, the electricity has been cutting on and off for a while now. It's raining here and it's being a little bit difficult with the internet. So it's very possible that, you know, if you guys feel like I'm, I'm getting stuck or I'm lagging a little, uh, let me know and I'll just turn off my camera and continue with the class without the camera. Um, so yeah, because as, as I said, you know, there has been issues with my internet and I am currently, or I mean, I have been using my, um, my phone signal, but it's not the best. So yeah, let's, let's hope that there are no problems, no other problems, at least, um, electricity is good by now, but it has been, as I said, it has been putting on and off. So hopefully it's not going to happen during this class as you know, it's the cool class. So, uh, for tonight, what do we have? Well, we have Claudia, that is something. Uh, so we have Claudia tonight and, uh, I think we're going to hear from her participation. She was, um, do yesterday but you know hopefully hope you are ready claudia because i tried to you know save your space for today apart from that we are going to be talking about the adverbs that i was mentioning yesterday we didn't get to share you know that information yesterday we will today and um, yeah we will um we will be talking about uh no wait one second. Let me see. No me digan que no lo guardé. One second. Uh, let's see. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Okay, so yeah, here I have it. We will be talking about passive in present continuous. We will be talking about tech as well. I think that the topic about tech is going to be the most interesting one. But yeah, we also have... Um, Gabriela with us. So that means that we have the two people with the speeches for tonight. Hope that, you know, as I said, um, you guys are ready and we're going to get to hear some great information this evening. Now, before I get started, I have to ask you guys, do you happen to have any questions? Uh, it can be as per usual regarding, you know, the lesson or there can also be questions about words or phrases you guys have heard that you would like to clarify. You know, I always love to share um, when it's possible. So yeah, is there any questions or are there, sorry, any questions regarding topics related to the class or regarding topics apart from the class that you would like to, um, you would like to get to touch base on? Okay, so it seems like there are no questions. Um, before I give you guys the space, I think, Claudia, are you ready? Sorry, teacher, I no me conecté. Okay, está no. bien. No me preparé, no sabía que me tocaba a mí ahora. Oh, pero, um, okay, está bien. Creo que vamos a escuchar entonces de, uh, de parte de Gabriela, sí, y pues ya en otra ocasión sería su, su turno. Muy bien, entonces, um, Gabriela, are you ready? Yes, teacher. Okay, you may start then when you uh, feel like it. Okay. Uh, my my topic is why the school is children give hours. In my investigation uh, about this topic, I'll find while school is an important part of a child's life, it also as important that the child takes a break from his education. Multiple studies have found that most students are getting to most uh, extra assignments, lending to a sleep depri deprivation on health levels of stress, as well as a related health problems. It increases, increases student stress during the past uh, couple of years, the issue of hunger has become um increasingly increasingly thirdly one um 
some parents worry that their children are stressed by the pressure to complete their assignment. Others argue that homework is a beneficial tool for students to boost their academic skills. Um, while homework has many benefits, it also has some drawbacks among then is the fact that it can lead to a stress, depression, and another negative effect. Personality, there are ways to minimize the effect of homework on your child. One way is to limit an uh, amount of homework your child has to complete. This can help their better manage their time and make more produce productive use their academic day. And another option is to allow your child to work on their homework at their home. It can lead to fatigue and a loss of interest in, in academics. And an article published by CNN as a study showed that the overhelping amount of hunger students receive can actually hurt their physical and mental health. While this while the study has based of a high achieving school, the results show a with 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 a spirit problem with hunger. High school students say they are often stressed about school work and need more time for other activities. The problem is worse among students is economical disadvantage and neighborhoods. And my, in my, in my, my, sorry, in my personal opinion, I'm going to tell about my uh, my personal opinion, my daughter. Mm -hmm. That's good. This uh, doesn't uh, bring me hunger. Um, since at the school they work everything the ba the basis uh, on a work gift. If uh, she works in the in the in the school all day. All day and uh, only one only when when she falls behind in any subject or whatever reason she support herself with the give the platform mm -hmm. all right only that. all right thank you thank you very much yeah and it's great information you know it's something that um i think we teachers don't consider sometimes and uh, I don't know, Lorena, you are a teacher, right? Yes. And what is your take on, on homework? I think I think that when we have a, like a 30 students at the same time, we are not sure how much have they learned mm -hmm. because you just give an information for all of them, you, you put some exercise. And of course, uh, all of them are going to join the answers and and do a lot of things together, but you don't, you are, you are not, you aren't sure that if they really learn. And when you give them, give them a uh, homework, you, if they work by, by, by themselves, you can, you can be okay. that. Yeah. If they really understand the, the, the subject or, or the thing that we're studying, or if they're, they're not, because sometimes I have students that they say, no, miss, I know this. I have I have worked on this all morning. But when they, they began, they start doing the exercise, they can't do any, anyone. And I say, when? What happened? Mm -hmm. they, they were easy. But they were easy. I don't know why I, I can do it. Because when you are with the teacher, everything is easy. You, you, you ask, ask her something or you add to your classmate. But when you are alone, it's when you learn. Like English, when I am with the platform alone, it's when I say I, I understand or I don't understand because mm -hmm. I'm alone and don't have you to ask. Mm -hmm. 
Anything. <laughs> okay. Then I think that they, yes, they they have to to do homework. homework. All right, yeah. great. Yeah. So um, I ask you because you know it's always important to take uh, opinions from teachers in consideration, and uh, you, I mean taking it from that point of view, of course, is going to be um something that you're gonna need. You know, it's because. And I think that it's also something that happens because of our educational system. In yeah. the case that, uh, at the, what you mentioned, Gabriela, because you said that your daughter is at school the, the whole day, I think that teachers have a longer period for them to assess the students one by one. And they have more chances, you know, to see if the students have lear actually learned. Um, in my experience, when I was in, 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 in the school that I worked in the U.S., um, they do not believe in homework. The only teacher that will assign homework was the English teacher. Uh, but there was even a, a, a little bit of an argument with her because the rest of the teachers were not agree with that. They will say that, you know, homework was not necessarily something that um, a student should take home because what will happen. And just to make it clear, we're talking about kindergarten, okay? I work only with kindergarten, so that's why the argument took place because the rest of the teacher said that no child, no child was going to work on that homework by themselves. It was basically yeah. impossible. The results that you were going to be getting were results coming from the parents, not from the students. Sunday. So it was better for her to um to assess the students on her own. So they got to a decision because she said that it was too short to assess the students on one hour. Because she only had one hour a day. The rest of the time, all the kids were with me or with the other teacher. So um, she only had one hour a day with the kids. So they got to an agreement and they said that what was going to happen is that the English teacher, she had to take only five groups. So it would it mean that she only worked five hours. So during a regular working day, she had at least two hours free. Uh, that the rest of the teachers didn't have. We Because, for example, for that hour, I, I was supposed to go to meetings. I was supposed to, I mean, I was basically running all over the place. The, ch the child were, you know, there at English class, but I was going from here to there, and I was doing a lot of things during that time. Um, and she was the only one who had that time off. So what we decided was that um, as the day has five days, or the week has five days, or five working days, um, was that all teachers were going to be sending kids for five minutes every single um, corresponding day. In, for example, in, in our class, the corresponding day was, I think it was Tuesday. So we will send one by one all the kids for five minutes for, be, uh, for them to be on an assessment with her. So Tuesday was the day for my kindergarten. So I was going to be sending kids, you know, one by one every five minutes so that she will assess them on how much they were learning instead of assigning homework. So uh, that is something that I also tried to do at the university when I started working there uh, because I do not like the idea of homework. I feel like, you know, most students, as you said, they just get stressed and some even get depressed when they don't have, you know, the regular time for them to be like off. And in this case, it was supposed to be, you know, adults. With teenagers, when I, I used to work at a college, I work at a, you know, at a, at a private school for a while. And with them, I will assign more homework because I felt like, um, what you might call it? They're like kind of bossy. Like they feel like they have authority. So to lower those nerves or to lower those, those kind of uh, perspectives, I will assign, you know, homework just like to, to make them work a little bit more instead of giving them... Uh, more free time for them to just do things that were not important for their lives, I will try, you know, to assign homework. However, I am a huge believer of projects. Instead of homework, a project. You know, something that is long-term, that is going to keep the students busy, but it's not going to make them work on a task that is, like, tedious day by day. They're going to have to work on a longer period. Now, there also comes responsibility because, of course, when you're um, working on a project, if you're not responsible, if you leave it, if you leave everything for last, well, that's a problem. But that teach them also responsibility there. They're supposed to be working, you know, on a weekly basis. However, when I will assign this, um, this project, of course, it was necessary 
to touch base with them, you know, every now and then to like analyze where they were going or if they were working um, to see what were the like the advances they were having. But still, homework, I think it's useful. And uh, depending on like the class or depending on on the topics that you're touching base with, they are going to like prove the case that homework is useful. But sometimes we also need to like take up time, you know, to analyze the students and to see what sort of homework they need. Because with kids, I don't see the point. You know, with kids from like maybe uh, up to, to second grade, I don't really see the point of on assigning homework. I prefer to do things like those. And that's why, you know, I come back to mentioning that it has to do with our educational system because we have, you know, created the classes or the kids to go to school only for four or five hours. And that leaves them, with, or it leaves us as teachers with all that time that we don't ha get to work with them. The rest of uh, the schools in the world that are successful, what they do is that they normally have six hours with students. So those two extra hours are the hours that they can use to do assessments. Oh, esa era la única palabrita también que, um, que, que le iba a decir. La palabrita assignments. Sí, es assignments. Para las tareas, it's assignments. So yeah, but, but apart from that, you know, it's it's great. And when you're talking about evaluation, um, okay, thank you very much for sharing, Sandra. Um, oh, sorry, that was a private message. Well, anyway, thank you very much for sharing. So um, thing is that, yes. Oh, yes, Luis. Teacher, mm -hmm. good evening. Evening. About that word uh, assignment, uh, that is the same like a uh, homework. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is basically the same as a homework. Or uh, you can also use the word task when you're talking about you know those those sort of things, because the word task is like a like something you have to do, um, something you're supposed to do. So yeah, assignment, task, uh, or homework are going to be very similar. However, assignment and task are more similar because they can be used in other industries. They can be used in, in many situations and homework is normally seen only as an education word. So homework is not necessarily used, um, for example, for uh, for work. You could not use it as, as, as that. However, you can do, um, you can use assignments. And yeah, by the way, I send you a message here touch base on. I have used this word a few times tonight and I wanted to clarify. Touch base on, do you guys have any idea of what it means to touch base on or touch base with? We have those two variants, touch base on and touch base with. ¿Alguna idea de qué puede significar esa frase? Okay, so um, touch base on is used to refer to talking or discussing um, something. So touch base on is talking or discussing something. And touch base with is talking or arguing or discussing with someone. So for example, um, if I have to make a decision here, if I have to tell you like, okay guys, we are going to work on this and this and that, um, and some of you may ask me, like, can we talk about it tomorrow? And if I didn't have the lead of the class, I will have to tell you, all right, okay, let me touch base with, you know, the manager and I'll let you know. So touch base with is that I'm going to talk to someone. And touch base on is like, as we did today, we are going to touch base on adverbs. So it means that we're going to talk about adverbs. So this is like the topic, you know, that we are going to be covering like right now. So yeah, that's, you know, a tiny phrase that you can take with you guys and that you can start using in the future. So now, adverbs with uh, tempo. I have a question. Oh, yes, yes. Sorry, so yes, just it's because okay. I remember. It's Did okay. you ask the, uh, in Sephora about the, the Exercise, question? yes. Yeah? yeah, I was actually what thinking is, about that. They said that this? they said that they were gonna fix it. However, they were gonna they were supposed to let me know when it was fixed because yeah they um because it has to be before the finish the course finish yes no? before we finish the course yes or okay, if okay. they find as it has happened before sometimes they do these edits afterwards 
If they find the proper answer, they will let me know what the answer is and I will send it to you. Because Please. that's what happens sometimes. Yeah, sometimes okay. what they do is that they simply just give us the right answer. So you guys have the right answer and you just type that and, and they take it like that. Okay. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. No, you're welcome. And I was thinking, you, you kind of read my mind because I was yeah. thinking, <laughs> I was thinking that I was, as I, you said, you know, I, I'm going to touch base with, I remember that I did touch base with them <laughs> about the topic and I was like, yeah. Okay, okay, but yeah, moving on then. Um, adverbs with simple past and past perfect. The other day I told you about some of these adverbs that we can use and how they can get to change the meaning of what you're saying. So here we're going to analyze how much of that meaning can change and when these adverbs can change the meaning of something. So when you use these adverbs uh, with the simple past to describe something that happens, on a later time, at a later time, sorry, at a later time. So afterwards, later, the next day, we laughed about it. This is normally used when you're telling a story. Um, let's say that an example could be, um, I fell when I was coming out of the store. Afterwards, we laughed about it. So yeah, it's, you know, something that uh, is, following the same idea like um i'm sharing you know something that happened in the in the past but something that is still in the past happens afterwards or happened later or happened the next day so it's still part of the story and i want to include it so i need to use these adverbs to include it so it's you know um as i said it's you telling a story you having different parts to the story so these are the words that you can use to a stitch all these stories. A stitching, if you guys know, is like when you join, you know, things together. So yeah, you can use these adverbs or these words to stitch all the parts together. So afterwards, later, or the next day, or the next hour even, the next evening, the next, um, what, the next meeting, if it's something that has to do with that. Of course, these words are always replaceable. When you have words like this, like day, you can, of course, always replace them with what suits you best. Um, so yeah, words like afterwards and later, those are not replaceable. And they also have a very similar meaning in the case of, I mean, in you, Luis, I feel like you like synonyms. So those two are very similar, afterwards and later. I honestly prefer to use afterwards. I don't know if you guys has not, have noticed that, but I use this word afterwards a lot um, because I feel like I, I love complicated words. It's way easier to say later. But uh, yeah, afterwards sounds more, um, what you might call it, more, more complicated. Just leave it at that. So yeah, then the next ones we have when, as soon as, the moment, and uh, yeah, the moment I got, the moment I got. Um, so use these words uh, or or these adverbs with the simple past to describe two things that happen at the same time. So once again, when you're telling a story and there are two events taking place at the same time and those two events colliding have a result that probably you're going to mention afterwards. So those two details are going to be joined or stitched together by using words like when. Yeah. And how can we use it then? Well, you can say something like when I was getting into the hospital, I saw um what i saw eric running uh across the street so that is something that happened when exactly when you were doing it then um now you can also say i saw eric running uh across the street when i was getting into the hospital so those two are or, or these words are not necessarily um to be at the beginning or at uh or in the middle however in the case of the first ones that i mentioned these are normally in the middle. These are normally used as conjunctions. They are adverbs, but they are placed, you know, in between the two sentences. So afterwards, later, or the next day, those are normally going to be placed in uh, in between the sentences. And normally, they come after a period. That is another thing that you need to um, to take into consideration. They normally come after a period. However, these ones are either placed at the beginning or in the middle of the two sentences. These ones are used with compound sentences because, yeah, 
um, when you use them at the beginning, as with most of these sentences, you're going to need to use a comma in the middle. So you say, for example, when I was getting into the hospital, comma, I saw Eric running ar across the street. So, and uh, if you do it in the middle, you will have to say, uh, I saw Eric running across the street when I was getting into the hospital. So there you will not need a comma because the um, adverb plays the function of the conjunction and it's basically there in the middle, you know, to, to stitch or to join the two sentences together. Um, the same happens with as soon as. You can say, um, as soon as I was getting into the hospital, I saw Eric running across the street. Or you can say, I saw Eric running across the street as soon as I was getting into the hospital. Now, none of you have, have uh, asked me why uh, cannot you place the sentence backwards? Like, why can't you say, I was getting into the hospital as soon as I saw Eric running across the street? This is because you have two different subjects. And you have a third subject and you, which is the main subject, you know, the, the main character in this story. So you cannot place yourself in the first sentence if there is a third subject. If you are part of the, both the stories, of course, you can place you either way. But if you are only in one of the sentences as a subject, you need to place this at the end of the story. Porque es casi como la frase del español, ¿verdad? Eh, el burro por delante, ¿sí? No se puede hacer eso. Entonces, no podemos colocar a nosotros primero en la oración. Tenemos que colocar siempre a la tercera persona primero. So, it would be, as I, am, I have been saying, you know, I saw Eric running across the street as, or the moment I got into the hospital, for example. The moment I got into the hospital. Um, so, yeah. Now, in the other case, however, when uh, when you're doing it um, with the adverb at the beginning, you say your part primero, sorry, your part first, because you uh, were developing the action. And that is another thing. You were developing this action when the other thing happened or when while the other thing was happening. So when you do it with this adverb at the beginning, it's because of that. Because you are developing an action while something else is happening or um, after something else happens. So those are kind of tricky top, um, tricky differences or tricky characteristics that you need to consider. But yeah, normally what you do is that when um, this is going to be in the middle, the adverbs are going to be in the middle, you say the third person or the other person um, sentence first, and then you say your sentence. Um, so yeah, now the next one, use these adverbs with the past perfect to describe something that was true or that happened before another event in the past. So here we have some of those phrases that are just very useful. And I don't know, it's, it's you know, the kind of vocabulary that I love to learn and that I also love to share. Uh, we have up until then, up until then, that's one of them, up until then. We also have before that, before that, and we have until that time, until that time. So, as the description states, we use these adverbs with per, uh, past perfect to describe something that was true or that happened before another event in the past. So, we say, for example, I was in love with her up until and then you mentioned for example i discovered uh she had been cheating on me for example i was in love with her up until i discovered aquí no se necesita siempre que sea el up until then podría ser up until i discover i up, up until um the rest of the events you know that took place so yeah um or this before that is normally placed at the beginning of the sentence, you say something like, um, before that, I had uh, always been, what? A shy person. Before that, I had always been a shy person. Um, in the sentence with, or like in a full sentence, it could be something like, um, I met, a, what? A speech teacher. I met or I had a class with a speech teacher. Before that, 
I had always been a shy person. I had, or I took a curse. I took a curse with a speech teacher. Before that, I had always been a shy person. So there you have it. It's something that uh, was true before something else happened or before I took this curse with the speech teacher. Well, I used to be shy. I was, you know, the shyest person before I took this course. It's not true in my case. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, some, some example you can mention. Now, until that time can also be used um, simply as until then. Uh, so yeah, these ones are like, you know, uh, these ones are like Legos. You can take away some parts and, and they are still going to be useful in these kinds of sentences. So until that time is, for example, um, you say something like, what? Um, I used to go out a lot. That is a simple past sentence. I used to go out a lot until that time when I had a terrible experience when I was robbed, for example. That could be, you know, something that you may say. Until that time when I was robbed or when I had a uh, robbery happen to me, and I got scared. So it's something that was true, that was happening. But because of this, it's not happening anymore. So there you have two things that are um, basically colliding, but they collide and go into separate directions. So yeah, those are like the, um, the adverbs that you can use and the different ways in which you can use them. No. Just, I... just to clarify. Mm -hmm. Then those uh, are most mostly used in the at the beginning. Yeah, most of the time they are going to be used at the beginning. These ones are the only ones that can be used in the middle. The, the ones that yeah, the ones that have um like the events happening, you know, like at the same time, like something that yeah you're doing while something else is happening. So yeah, okay, yes. okay. so. Uh, once again, these are, are phrases that, you know, you can use as, as, uh, decoration. Some people call them that if they're like basically decor for decorating the phrases that you're using, it's not necessarily, um, that, you know, you're giving them, uh, like a, a huge importance, but they they work whenever you want to, um, like make it more clear or to, um, to make it sound more interesting to some extent. So they're not like necessary for sentences, but they do work if you want to like make, uh, as, as it always happens with the adverbs. Adverbs are simply used to establish a little bit of a change in the verbs. And that those changes can be um, in terms of like form or in terms of um, decoration, when, which is what happens with these adverbs that are normally just used to make the um the phrases more attractive to the ear. So yeah. But anyhow, we're gonna move on and we're gonna talk about tech now. This word over here, many people get it confused. It's not tech, okay? It's not tech. Not only because in in fast and furious they call it tech, it means that it's tech. It's tech. So yeah, tech. Tech is the, 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 the not acronym, but the shortened version of technology that is very common uh, nowadays is something that, you know, um, younger people or younger generations are using a lot. So, yeah, it's very common to refer to technology as tech nowadays. Now, before we get to establish the junctions between uh, these words and their definitions, I want to get to read the definitions with you guys. So I would like to get help from you into reading all the definitions that we have over here. So I think that I'll be trying to call one by one um, for you to help me out with reading these definitions. So let's see. In the case of uh, Luis, can you please help me reading the first one? Yes. Uh... Technology buzzwords. Letter A. Mm -hmm. match, match the internet term on the left with the definition on the right. 
Number one, download. And I uh, would like you to read uh, this definition, the definition um, uh, yeah. letter A. Software available for free. Great, software available for free. Um, how about we hear Carla for letter B? Yes, teacher, a radio or TV show for your MVP3 players. All right. Radio, radio or TV shows for your MP3 player. Um, how about Melanie? Can you please help me reading letter C? Transfer files to your computer. Nice. How about Imelda? Can you please help me read a letter D? Harmful software that attacks computer. All right. Um, how about um, Elizabeth? Can you please help me reading letter E? Sure. Message that are faster than email. Great. Thank you. Um, Gabby Garcia, can you please help me with letter F? Okay. A place that has wireless internet access. Great. Um, how about Leslie? Can you please help me with uh, letter G? Software that securely records your online activity. Already. Lorena, can you please help me with letter H? A website where people have discussions. Nice, nice, nice. Um, let's see. Uh, Rosa, can you please help me reading letter I? Um, yeah, there I did well, that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, um, a camera that send light video over internet. Great, nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, let's see, Claudia. Mm -hmm. Can you please help me with the last one, with letter J? Yes, an online journal of personal opinions. All right. So I think this info um, sounds very familiar for us today, right? It's something that um, many of us are familiar with and uh, is kind of easy for us to know what it means. Back in the day, however, it was not that common and people didn't really have access to technology as we do today. And this was something um, like very, very, very weird. Now, there was a question that I wanted to ask you today. And uh, it's kind of tricky, but it has to do with this. I hope you guys remember. It's going to take you to a long time ago. I want you to think. I want you to remember. What was the first message that you sent on the phone or on your phone? Try to remember that. Or try to remember when was the first message that you sent over the phone. Try to remember. I want you to, to share with me the experience that you had the first time that you sent a message on the phone. Um, so I think that I'll start by sharing mine. And mine was actually in ninth grade. I, I, I almost never had access you know, to technology. Um, in my house, I only got um, cable TV after my mom passed because my my dad thought that it was going to be a way for me to get um, sort of distracted from the fact. Um, but yeah, but I sent my first message when I was in ninth grade. I had had my phone for almost two years by that time, uh, but I never had the need to send a message. I remember it was very hard because it wasn't one of those phones that only had, you know, the, the regular numbers. So I didn't understand how it worked. I didn't understand the system. And I sent a message to the one that used to, oh, sorry, the one that used to be my crush at that time. And I asked her, I, I, I only told her it's Oscar. So that was it. You know, that was my first message uh, on, on this like new era. Now it's like, we type such long messages sometimes 
that maybe we forget about how hard or how difficult it was to type on those phones. Now, how about you? How was your guys' first experience? I think I would like to start by hearing maybe from the um older generation. So sorry if, if you guys, I hope you guys don't get offended, but I will start by, you know, the older generation and then I'll go to ask the, the younger guys. So let's see. In the case of... Be realistic. Uh, yeah, in the case of you, uh, Imelda, now that you have talked, so... <laughs> Do you remember your That's first... not fair. <laughs> well, you kind of asked for it. <laughs> well, uh, we have to accept. Yeah. Well, do my, you my, have any my... memory on how was your first message? My very first message mm -hmm. was and noticed to my cousin that I wasn't uh, in the institute. Uh, it was about 2004. Wow, that's an mm -hmm. four. Yeah, in yes. my third year of bachelor. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a long time ago. I yeah, was... It was that was my my first my very first cell phone. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was in like third or fourth grade back then. Third grade. I was in third grade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was in third grade back then. Okay. So it was a message to your cousin. At least you remember who you texted. So that's nice. Uh, how about you, Lorena? Do you remember your first phone message? No. No? You yeah, don't? I know. I have, I have been thinking about it, but no. I don't, I don't remember. Maybe because For I, I have just only... I am the person no no good in technology. I like uh -huh. almost to call. Uh -huh. I don't have Facebook. I don't have Instagram. I don't have anything else. Just WhatsApp because I need with the classes, but I I don't have. And I I just uh, call. Okay. And maybe I I resist to have the new ones until I I had to maybe for that reason. All right. Well, you know, that's, it's always nice to, to have uh, some privacy. And I feel like social media doesn't give you that. So it's better, you know, to just keep it at that, to just stay away from all those things that can be toxic and all. Um, so, yeah, and it's normal. I, I, at least I do think that. Um, I think you guys have experienced it. You have a firsthand experience that I am horrible, horrible at answering Teacher. text messages. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Imelda. And 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 the first play, and the first game was the the snake, you know. <laughs> I do. And the one in Nokia. A snake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I do remember those. That those were the only things that I used to um you know to take the phone for, just to play. I also remember the first time I played a song on a computer. On a uh, on the on the on the um the, the CD player in a computer, it was such an experience. I don't know if you guys remember the XP how how the uh, Windows XP had this um yeah. MP3 um player that was like very psychedelic and all that. I yeah. I loved how it looked. I love how it looked, and I remember it was a Don Omar song, the first one that I played there. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's you know, it was also. I was, I think, in like six. It was right? a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. But yeah, it, as I was saying, I am horrible at replying messages. Um. I do share the same opinion as as Lorena. I prefer to call whenever I have like a situation. I prefer to call. Now, I am like that even with my girlfriend. You know, it's not like I'm. I'm. It's just with you guys. Uh. Sometimes. Uh. I think it was last week. She was kind of mad at me because she knew that I was sick and she knew that I wasn't working. She knew that I was home. And uh, I didn't text her all day. Like, I was with my phone, yes. But I don't know. I'm just bad at replying text. So, yeah, it's like, you know, whenever I reply, it's like, feel lucky. Because, yeah, it's not <laughs> something that happens a lot. It, do it's not, it doesn't really take place a lot with me. Um, so, yeah. It, I don't know. It's something that I, I used to have a long distance relationship. And that's basically what got me tired of texting. I was texting basically all day with my ex-girlfriend. And uh, 
that kind of got me tired of the of the fact that I needed to be texting with people. Um, so yeah, now it's like sometimes I see like somebody has texted me, uh, and I just throw my phone away and I'm like, okay, I'm a reply to that day never comes. You know, the day that I reply, it almost never comes. So yeah, I'm sorry, but it's just you know the way I am. Now, how about you, Luis? In your case, do you remember the first text message that you sent? Uh, I I really don't remember my text, my first text message, but I think it could be between the year nineteen ninety nine and the uh, two thousand and four. We use it uh, in that moment the BlackBerry, mm -hmm. and uh, we we always uh, send different text and message. But I really don't remember the what was I wrote in that moment and the and the date specific. That's okay. That's okay. Um, ¿Cómo es que se llamaba esto? Se me olvidó. La cosa que usaban para mandarse mensajes cortitos antes es... Era un beeper. 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 That thing. Did you use a beeper? Who, who here had a beeper? Maybe in, in one moment, uh, I think that that could be in in the years in between 1993 and 1996. Maybe in that moment, I, I use it. Uh, a beeper? A, mess, but a beeper. Oh, okay. Uh, that, so basically before I was born. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. In that moment, use a beeper is... Uh, it was a luxury. <laughs> yeah, that's what my dad says. He used to have a, a beeper when he was living in the U.S. He said that he used to have a beeper. Yeah, it was because he was like the the leader in his group where he worked. So he was the one that got the messages, you know, from the boss. Uh, but yeah, he, he says that it was a luxury. It was something that not many people had um, back then. Claudia, what are you going to say? Um, I... I really use a beeper. <laughs> I am old school. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, it was for mother to message us, asking if she was okay, if she's uh, arrived somewhere. This mm. is uh, mm. para lo que más lo usábamos. <laughs> okay. Nice. Uh, you know, it's it's. I had never had the opportunity. Beepers have never really been on my radar. I have never really had the chance to use them, but I have heard that, you know, they, they were high tech and they were also um, very difficult to obtain. Um, now, how about the first text message? Do you remember the first text message that you sent? Yes. Um, madre, mi madre. <laughs> Asking me if I... I... I go to supermarket uh -huh. to buy bread for dinner. <laughs> All right. This why my first message. <laughs> okay. So you see, it's 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 like sometimes we think about those situations and we feel like it's it has been so long. So yeah. Now I am going to switch. I am going to ask the younger generation because we still have you know we don't really have like a, a long long time left. Um, how about in the case of uh, Carla? In your case, do you remember the first message that you sent? The first text message that you sent? Hi, I teacher. I, I really don't remember anything about my first uh, message. Uh, I don't know. But my first uh, cell phone was a Blackberry too. Uh, when you have a social media, and you can use these webs or these apps in this cell phone. But uh, that's all I, I really don't remember the first message. So you never had to fight with the teclitas? Um, yes, oh. I had a Motorola. Oh, okay. Yes, with the blue, uh, how can I say, pantalla? Uh, screen? Uh, yes, with the blue screen. Oh, okay. Mm. 
Yeah, because yeah, I, I I remember that when I was I I first started the university, people who had a BlackBerry was just top of the line. You know, the people who had a BlackBerry were basically the most popular. In my case, I started high at my university with uh, teclitas. I'm the ones that had a lantern included. So yeah, that was my phone. It was almost like fifteen dollars back then. Uh, I remember that my first phone, I bought it by saving money, um, you know, by saving from my university money. Um, but yeah, it was, it was quite an experience. The first time I had the chance to text and it was so weird for me at the beginning because I was so used to, to like typing with the, uh, with the teclitas and yeah, it was, it was such a, such a, such a thing, you know, back then. How about in the case of, um, I don't know, Gabby. Garcia, do you remember the first text message that you sent? To be honest, no. I don't even remember uh, which type of cell phone did I have. Uh, I don't even remember anything. I just I just remember the time that we sent messages to the radio or the TV shows uh, to, to send greetings for our classmates or something like that or to choose music yeah that's right like that. i remember but that as well i i really don't remember texting uh, chivisimo like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well um those days i do remember very well how it was you know to text or when we had those um no me acuerdo como es que le decían a los viernes pero eran noches de no sé qué like, you know, to stay awake and they even gave away messages. Yeah, like, you know, you had some free messages. That Lunaticos. You... Eso mismo. Eso. Thank you. Yes, that was the one. So, uh-huh. I remember those days Uh, and it was like, you know, we were texting everyone and, and like everyone was texting everyone and, and that was just so, such a thing. And uh, I also remember my dad getting mad at me because those phones were very loud and they will, you will hear, you know, when you were typing. So he will tell me like, stop doing that. Like go to sleep, go to bed. It's, it's like 10 PM already. And now sometimes I stay up until three and like nothing happens. You know, it's like times, times change. Uh, now, how about in your case, Elizabeth, do you remember the first message that you sent? Yes, I remember that. In my case, my first phone was uh, Motorola C715, mm -hmm. que parecía marcianito. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and, uh -huh. Yes, uh, it has... Uh, I was cute. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it's very cute. I And I work very fast. <laughs> my mother is... Uh, uh, is called me very time she has uh, a great tipping and i say my first message to my sister number because i had it in the bed <laughs> and i waited to see they're ready right see okay all right so yeah i mean um it was also there were there were less toxic people back then because you were texting, but you didn't even know or you didn't even knew if the message was even sent. You know, it's like it was you had to wait. And I remember that it happened many times to me that I was trying to send messages and I had run out of messages or the message package. And uh, I wish I had known me before because I will have asked me for a top up and, uh, you know, to get more messages to continue talking with people. Um, but it was very hard when at around 10 p.m. you ran out of messages and you didn't know what to do. So, yeah, that's why the lunatic nights were, were great. Ahora, see, if you guys didn't ever saw the, the, the phones, eso serán. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, my cousin had one of those. My cousin had one of those. I never did. I the first My first phone was an LG something. I don't remember what uh, line it was, but it was an LG. But wait, okay, uh, how about the last person? Leslie, in your case, do you remember the first message that you sent? I think it was in eighth grade. And the first message that I sent was to my crush of that day. 
<laughs> and all <I> that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was funny. But I remember that I say, hi, I'm Leslie. Same <laughs> nice as me. To meet you. <laughs> but it was great because uh, he would, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was my boyfriend. <laughs> oh, I that that is the same as me. <laughs> <laughs> so I won. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 not same as me. No, she we are friends. I mean, we were friends. The families were friends, but uh we never got into our relationship or anything. But yeah, I, that was basically the same thing that I did. You know, I texted her and the first thing that she replied was like, "How did you get my number?" And I was like, Dude, we, <laughs> yeah, like, dude, we see one another like very often. And the thing is that I wasn't texting her, you know, like in a romantic way. I needed a homework. Like it wasn't necessarily used to. Um, I did have the intention, but it was not the intention at that specific moment. But yeah, so going back in the day a little bit, you know, remembering a little bit of what uh, what used to be that is not anymore. Now it's like so easy. And uh, I don't know if you guys have ever used them, but now you can even um record <coughs> video notes on WhatsApp. I don't know if you guys use them at all. I do with my sisters. Um, me and my sisters, we love to send video notes um to one another. Uh, but yeah, it's like it's not only voice messages anymore; it's even video messages now. However, seeing uh, sorry, yes, Leslie, what are you gonna say? Uh, I prefer send voice note. I dislike the video not so <laughs> for I know. me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, it's it's only for funny purposes. That's why I only use it with my sisters. You know, I don't use it with anyone else. Not even with my girlfriend. No, yeah. I I'm. It's yeah. funny. It it is. I mean, it is funny because uh, you even look weird because you're only in this circle thing. So it's like you you even get to look weird. So yeah, I mean, it's not. Uh, it's not something yeah but, but when uh, uh -huh. excuse me when when you you um look for for it in the gallery mm -hmm. is is the all screen is complete screen oh really i never yeah i have never even looked yeah. at my gallery it's saving, I it's saving the gallery yeah you can does it happen in an you iPhone can look well? for it yeah I think, uh, wait, I don't know. I don't know if I do have them. No, I think I don't. I think I don't record them. I, I, I mean, they don't go to my, um, to my gallery, because no, well, I don't have but... any. Yeah, I don't have any of the ones that I sent with my sisters. It's better though. Well, cause... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, uh huh. But yeah, it's it's funny, you know, for funny purposes. Um, I prefer to use them to use it with them, but yeah, in in a like a formal conversation, I would never use uh, the video notes. But still, this um talking about technology. Tomorrow we're gonna wrap it up. You know, uh, we're gonna come and basically um wrap up or establish the connections between these these things. It's easy, as I say. Nowadays, for us, this is like easy information to remember. Like no one um, is um, completely like ignorant about what uh, a spyware can be, what a webcam is. It's like they're not even used anymore. It's weird that people uh, even get to, to use webcams if they're not like a streamers or if, if they don't do um, something apart from like using the regular camera. In my case, for example, I know one of my friends uh, that works here. She has a webcam. She prefers to to use the webcam. I think that you know, in my case, what I did is that I, I bought a better computer when I had the chance because um, using those things is like so outdated in my opinion. But still, technology is a great help, and if you use it correctly, of course, you're gonna get some great results from it. But tomorrow, as I said, we're gonna wrap it up with that. And we're also going to be moving on into talking about the passive and how we can use the passive in so many ways um, that are useful for X to express ideas that do not include a full on subject. And that is the main thing that, um, that the passive does in English. Now, um, for tomorrow, I don't know, Claudia, if you can prepare the speech, probably tomorrow we're only gonna have you 
So yeah, because we don't have you know more time to decide or to pick who are going to be the next participants. So if you can get ready, it will be amazing. Um, so yeah, to the rest of you guys, thank you. Oh, yes, Claudia, sorry. No, no, that's Claudia. Okay, all right. So uh, to the rest of you guys, thank you very much for your attention and participation in this evening's class. I hope you have an amazing rest of your night and I also hope I'll see you here tomorrow, um, you know, to continue practicing our English. So bye-bye for now. Have a great one and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Okay. Bye. bye.